podcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good morning and welcome to day three of the third annual Better Business Summit. I'm Paulette Scarpetti, your BBB president, and it has been a pleasure having you join us. We also hope you've had the opportunity to visit our sponsors who made this event possible. If you haven't, Simply visit betterbusinesssummit.com and click on the sponsors link. There are many fine videos to view from the sponsors and learn about the products that can help make your business better. This year's Better Business Summit was created with a focus on bringing enthusiasm to your business with a determination and urgency to do more than survive, but to thrive. We can all thrive with the right mindset. A mindset of assumption is an assumptions, methods, or notions you may have hold in your own mind, and they also may be changeable. What do you need to do to have a successful mindset? Today, Larry Janeski is going to help us answer these questions. Larry is well known for his successful companies and all things basementy. Larry is a testament to always learning and figuring how to make good things happen. For example, at the age of 18, Larry built his first house and another 23 houses in the next five years. When the building boom collapsed, Larry figured out how to make good things continue to happen. And in his early 20s, he started a basement waterproofing business and two years later, he was developing products for basement waterproofing industry and developing a dealer network of contractors to use those products across North America. <clears throat> now Larry's companies are collectively called Contractor Nation, and it is the largest employer in Seymour with 385 employees. The companies include contractor dealer networks in basement waterproofing, crawl space retrofitting, basement finishing, home energy conservation, and attic insulation. Connecticut Basement Systems is his local service company serving homeowners all across Connecticut and New York. Contractor Nation also includes an internet marketing agency for contractors, a finance company, and a school of entrepreneurship where he teaches other contractors to be successful. Larry is a teacher at heart. He has written many books, audio recordings, and taught thousands of individuals over the years. When asked to present today, Larry almost declined because he is once again joining his son to compete in the Ironman motocross race in the Baja 1000. However, if someone could clone themselves, Larry certainly seems to know how. Today, he will present a video recording from Larry's School of Entrepreneurship that he has provided for the BBB to share with the Better Business Summit attendees. Questions can be posted in the chat box and he has agreed to respond upon his return. So now let's watch together the mindset of the advancing person. So let's talk about the mindset of the advancing person. This is something I, I was thinking about. Well, what? What would be the qualities of a, of a really good leader sitting in the audience that was good, really going to make the most uh, progress from uh, these classes, okay? And so, first of all, desire, right? you got to want something that you don't have yet. Isn't that right? Do, do, we, do we all want something that we don't have, right? you got to want something that you don't have. Napoleon Hill said desire is the starting point of all achievement, Right? If you don't want anything other than what you have, right? you're, you're, you're not going to do anything more. Right? You're not going to try anything. Then you've got to have ambition. This desire for something that you don't have, to be someone that you, you know, that you aren't yet, to express something that you haven't yet, to bring something forth that's inside you that you know is there that is not expressed, or to, 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 to show that, hey, I, I can do it. If anybody can do it, I can do it too. That I'm no worse than the guy that succeeded. Or I don't want to be down here, you know, with the chickens. I want to soar with the eagles, you know. Whatever it is in you, that desire, now you have ambition. 
that fires an ambition. The ambition is the willingness to act, to close the gap between where you are and where you want to be, right? That's the action part of it, right? I'm, I want this. A lot of people, everybody wants something, right? I mean, there's people that don't do anything that want stuff, right? But you want it so bad and you're willing to do something for it. You have ambition, okay? Next is you're dissatisfied. You're dissatisfied with how things are. If you were satisfied with how things are, then you're not gonna do anything to change it, right? So you're dissatisfied. And, and what I mean is um, a healthy dissatisfaction, a healthy dissatisfaction. We have to manage the tension between where we are and where we wanna be. We have to have enough tension that we, we're moving forward and we're willing to get out of our comfort zone, but not so much dissatisfaction that we're walking around pissed off and upset all the time, right? And sad or you know whatever. Right? So we gotta have manage that that much dissatisfaction. Does that make sense? Okay. I, I've been in places where I've had too much dissatisfaction, right? And I walk around a, a bit upset, right? In whatever form that may take that day. Um, and you know, I guess I've never been satisfied myself, but you know, so we got to have, have, have enough dissatisfaction. Then we need to be aware that we're ignorant. Ignorant means you just, there's things that you need to know that you don't know yet, right? We need to be aware. See there, you, we all know people who are know-it-alls, right? That, oh, things aren't going well, but you know, they think they know everything, right? And some of them actually believe that they do. <laughs> and so if you think you know everything, then you're not gonna learn anything, right? There's no, no one can teach you anything. So we need to be aware that, hey, there's stuff I need to know in order to close that gap between where I am and where I wanna be. And then we need to be open, right? We need to be uh, open to ideas. We need to be willing to say we were wrong, not to me, to yourself, right? You can't hold stubbornly to your old self and your old ideas and your old paradigms, right? Your old self-concept and self-image. You can't hold on to that so tight that you can't be a new person because that's what you've got to do. You've got to let go of that old person to be a new person who gets new results because you know what? The old person, that's you, that's me today. We're getting the results that we deserve right now. Unless we've changed our behavior very recently and the world hasn't caught up and noticed yet and said, oh, I like what you're doing more now, Mark, than I like than what you were doing, you know, three months ago. And I noticed that now and I, I'm going to give you some more and different and better results from that. Right. It's cause and effect. So. We're getting the results that we deserve now, and we, in order to get better results, we've got to be someone new. But in order to be someone new, we gotta let go of that old person, right? Some people don't wanna do that. It's ego, it's pride, right? It's not wanting to look bad, it's not wanting to say you were wrong, right? But we need to um, let go, let go. Be willing to say, you know what? Yeah, that was me yesterday, and I was doing my best then, right? If I knew how to do better, I would have, but now I know better. And it's okay, I'm becoming a better person as, you know, I would, I would hope that even tomorrow would be even different than today, right? I will continue to get better. I will continue to get better. I will continue to look back at my old self and say, I can't believe you did that. I can't believe you behaved that way. I can't believe you thought that way, right? I can't believe you weren't doing these things, right? You always want to continue to be a better person and be willing to let go, right? All right. So that is the, uh, the mindset that I hope you come here with. And, you know, there's a lot of people who are not here, right? Uh, because, you know, maybe one of these ingredients was missing, okay? All right. Um, so your best thinking got you here. Your best thinking got you here. Is this true or not true? You're the leader, you're the owner, you're the guy and growl in charge. If you knew how to do it a better way, wouldn't you have? Were you holding back on yourself? Were you saying, I know a better way, but you know, I'm just gonna do it this, this crappy way. 
that. No, right? You were your best thinking. This was the best that you thought you could do, right? The best thing, the best strategy, the best approach, right? Am I right? Right? You were doing your best, right? And, um, you know, because you own the business, right? We're all business owners in here. That's what this class is about. So you were doing your best. So your best thinking got you here. So in order to get somewhere different, somewhere better, somewhere higher, therefore, what? Say again. Okay. We need to do some different thinking, some better thinking, right? Yes. We need to learn some, get some new ideas, right? If we're left to ourselves, you can write this down. Left to ourselves, we learn nothing. How can you learn from yourself? Well, there's one way with the, by failure, but that's really expensive, right? Experience is a great teacher, but it sends you big bills. You've come here that maybe you wouldn't have to learn yourself by making mistakes in the school of hard knocks, because you know what? There's too much to know to build a high-performing business. You will never learn it all on your own, even through the school of hard knocks. And you don't have time. We don't have time for that, right? We have, you know, how, how, how long is life here, right? If we could save uh, 10 years on our learning curve, 10 years of life, Right, we've done this before, right? You write the word lifetime, then you write the word life hyphen time, then you write the word life equals time. Doesn't it? That's all we got. The clock is ticking. When it's gone, it's gone. This, you, you, you had your chance. You decided to stall and wait. And even if you did make it, you made it on your 68th birthday. Wouldn't it be awesome if you could have made it on your 48th birthday? Whatever definition of we're talking about, right? If we can save years and learn less expensively than by trying and failure. Look, there's so many different areas that we have to try in, right? There's marketing, there's sales, there's production, there's appointment center, there's accounting, there's service, right? There's hiring. There's management, there's leadership, there's all these different areas. How are we going to learn all that on our own? So left to yourself, you learn nothing. Okay. So cause and effect. You cause this. You are doing things every day. You're showing up, be, being a person that you are, saying the words that you're saying making the decisions that you're making, putting this in place, not putting that in place, doing this in this way, talking to somebody in that way, and you get these results. Cause and effect, it's cause and effect. It's nothing personal. The world does not care. You do this, you get these results. You do this, you get these results. You do this, you get these results. That's how it works. So if you do what you've always done, finish the sentence, you get what you always got, right? Okay. So we need to do something different. And you know what? Even, even those of you that have built wonderful businesses, even you know, myself, right? We've got to, if, if we want different results, then we've got to do something different, right? We've got to... Figure it out. We've got to elevate ourselves to be the kind of person that attracts the results that we say that we want. Okay, there's no finish line here. There's no finish line. Write that down. There's no finish line. Okay. You can't judge your progress based on how close you are to a finish line because there's not one. You've got to learn to enjoy the daily ride because that's what it's going to be till you're done here. A daily ride. 
You're either going to drive the bus or it's going to drive you every day. We don't talk about this too much, but I want to I want to I want to talk about self-doubt, limitations and risk. Okay? Because sometimes when we if if we doubt ourselves, that's a huge problem. If we feel that there are limitations, now there are some limitations, but we need to understand which ones are limitations and which one we constructed for ourselves. And, and risk. Uh, if, we, if we perceive too much risk, we're not going to take action. Uh, so let's talk about these things, okay? So who doubts you? Self-doubt does more to sabotage individual potential than all external limitations put together. And I look around and I see the story of man is the story of people selling themselves short. Right? There's so much more that we could do in whatever arena it is that you decide to do it in and we don't use our capacity. Okay, So we don't want to uh, doubt ourselves. You can do this. You can do this. Sometimes, uh, you know, when we grew up, stuff happened. We're going to talk about uh, some of these things tomorrow. Like, what happened when they told you, you're not good, you're no good, you're not as good as your older brother, right? You're a C student. This class is for the A and B students, right? When did that happen that you decided that you weren't as good as another group or someone else? When did that happen that you, just, you accepted that idea and you decided to play small to fit into that self-concept that you created? There's nothing in the school here that you cannot implement. Graduates, is there? Right? This is all simple ideas. Simple ideas. But you need to have it here. Right? You need to believe in yourself. If you doubt yourself, that's the biggest problem of all. Yes? Okay. So I'm telling you that there's a shred of that in you. There's certainly some of that in me at times. Maybe, oh, on good days, no, I don't doubt myself. <laughs> Shoot, we sold 100,000 today, man. My guys are happy. On bad days, that's the time. Do you doubt yourself then, right? We want to make every day count. We're going to get there sooner, and we don't want to have ourselves be the one pulling the reins. Argue for your limitations, and sure enough, they're yours. Okay? So we don't want to, we have this voice in our head. All of us have a voice in our head constantly. It's saying something to us, right? And we have to watch that voice. Be careful. Be careful. We argue. You say, oh, well, see, I knew my area. Well, these guys... My guys, right? It's, we, we argue for our limitations. We argue for our, for our problems. And sure enough, they don't go away. Don't argue for your problems. And I'm telling you, you do that. I, I do that. We all do that. But we've got to catch ourselves doing that. So there's a difference between sitting there and writing notes and Listening to an idea and say, oh, yeah, that's a good idea. That's, that's, oh, yeah, that's right. And being a practitioner, that's very different. Being a practitioner. Being a practitioner means when that shit comes up in your head, you, you're there. You'll pop, intercept it. Stop. I hear it. I acknowledge it. I see what I'm doing. I see what I'm doing. I see it right here, but I'm so pissed off. But I see what I'm doing. Okay, all right. Stop. Okay, replace it with a new, more constructive thought. A new idea. Even if you don't believe it yet, 
you have to say it. I will get through this, and this is how I'm going to start right now. Okay? I don't believe it, but I'm going to say it to myself. And I'm going to say it again, and I'm going to say it again. That's being a practitioner. Right? That's being more than a person who wrote down notes on a good day. Right? It's those bad days. It's when you're confused that you intercept your own thinking. If you believe every thought you think, you're in trouble. You are not a perfect thought-making machine. You are a human being who is wired for survival, and you have all these negative, unhelpful emotions that boil up in you that are no longer useful. They were made for hunter-gatherer times when we lived in small tribes, right? And it was a violent world, and we were trying to compete for resources to stay alive and procreate, and all this crap is still in our head that's no longer useful. So we have to be a practitioner and catch yourself and understand that you are your own worst enemy in these moments. And you got to intervene on your own thinking. That takes practice. I'm still working on it myself. I was just working on it last night. So let's talk about this idea, learning the wrong lesson. Learning the wrong lesson. So um, learning too soon our limitations, we never learn our powers. So I want to unpack this idea a little bit. When we try things and then stuff happens, it's, it's easy to learn the wrong lesson. It's easy to learn I shouldn't try that. I'm no good at that. That doesn't work. These people are no damn good, right? When we really should be learning the lesson that when I do this in this way, in this situation, this happens. And if I change those variables and I can do it better, then I will get better results. You see? So you try something and it doesn't go as well as you had planned and you make the wrong, dis wrong conclusion you draw from that situation. And that becomes a belief. And now you're going around the world carrying these false beliefs. And you say, no, I tried that. Yes, but did you try it well? Did you do it correctly? Did you do it at the right time? Did you have the right intention? Did you have the right tone of voice? Did you hire the right person that you were trying to do this with in the first place? I made a hiring mistake, and now I'm having management issues. So you make decisions about management issues, but the real problem was the hiring. Right? Or maybe you are not the kind of person that high performers want to work for. We talked about that. You, how you show up. Am I the kind of person that other high performing people would want to work for? If I'm a wreck, if I'm a mess, if I'm unpredictable, if I yell at people, if I don't have my own stuff straight, right? Why would a high performing person from another company? want to come work for me and bet their future on me, right? They're a better quality, you know, individual with their stuff together better than I am. I'm not going to be able to attract people if, if I have these problems, if I have these flaws. Now, that's hard to hear, hard to look in the mirror and say, oh, shit, right? Because, you know, we thought we were doing our best, right? We're in charge. We're in the building. Nobody says, Mark, how you handled that? That was horrible, dude. Nobody says that to you, right? Because you're the boss. They don't want to say that to you. 
Instead, they turn around and go, right? I got to get another job when I get a chance, man, right? But you need to self-police. You need to work on yourself. It's lifelong practice. It never ends. If I work on me and I, I can at least you know, substantially fix my weaknesses, right, and build on my strengths or have someone else fill in for where I'm weak, which requires self-knowledge. I need to know where I'm weak. I need to know my weaknesses. Now I can fix my weaknesses, perhaps, but in general, we're all going to have strengths and weaknesses. So we can hire around our weaknesses or know when uh, I need to get someone else to handle this because I'm going to mess this up, right? But are you the kind of person that other high-performing people would work for? That's a huge question. I see some business owners struggle year after year after year after year. It's you. It's you. So the first part of it is self-awareness, and then you need to get some help. Help with you, and then help with other people taking care of other things in the business that you're not so good at. Right? But anyway, we don't want to learn the wrong lesson. So you could spend a lot of time on this. You can go back and say, what lesson did I learn that wasn't, was false? Right? I thought this situation was telling me X, but that's really my emotional mind, how I processed it, right? And my scared little child in there, or you know, uh, my uh, insecurity, Right? And my emotion matched with that situation, and I drew the wrong conclusion. Right? And it's debilitating me ever since. But it wasn't. I can see now, if you look at it back and you look at it clearly, you can see it was just the world giving you feedback. And other people were acting the way they acted because they had all their problems too. Right? And then they acted that way, and then you responded this way, and that was or so we need to understand that it's cause and effect, right? That we caused it, and let's learn the lesson. Don't do that that way anymore. Do it better, right? Be a different person out there, and then I'll get different results. Don't make a decision and, or learn a lesson that, that, that was false. Am I making any sense? These are the, the, the core of, of, uh, of leadership, these, these, these ideas. If you have biases and, and, and false beliefs, you're going to show up in the world with them and act with them in all your dealings. So we need to get ourselves right, right? When the man is all together, his world is all together. You remember the story, right? I'll tell it again. <laughs> man was, comes home from a busy day. He sits down in his chair and he gets his newspaper out. He's just tired. He just wants to relax and read the newspaper. And his young son comes up, daddy, 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 play with me, play with me. Just, I've had a rough day. I'm frazzled. I just don't, I, I just want to be left alone. He takes the newspaper, he, and there's a picture of the earth in a big advertisement from space, you know, like the earth from space. And he tears it up into pieces, and he says, here, son, here, this is a puzzle. Uh, put this together, Okay. Uh, with some tape. He figures, oh, that'll keep him busy for like hours, right? He'll go away. He comes back in record time. It's got the earth, you know, it's patchwork, but it's all taped together. All the continents are in the right place. He's six years old. How did he do that? He says, son, how did you put the world together so quickly? And his son said, it was easy, Daddy. There was a picture of a man on the other side. And I just put the man together, 
and the world was all together. And that's how it is, isn't it? That's how it is. When you're not right, nothing's right. Is that, is that true? When you're right, the world is good. Right? It's reflecting you. Cause, effect. Right? Put the man together and the world is all together. It's an amazing thing. And that's what we're talking about. Okay. So two big mistakes. Um, So we're talking about limitations here, okay? Two big mistakes. Accepting limitations that should be challenged. Okay, so you feel there's a limitation and you've accepted it, but it really should be challenged. It's a false limitation. You made it up. It's a mental construct, okay? Or maybe it's a limitation unless you get better. And you can get better and overcome that limitation, right? You guys know what I'm talking about, right? Accepting limitations that are really not limitations. Now, there's another mistake is challenging limitations that should be accepted. The world is full of paradoxes. We've got them all over the place. Challenging limitations that should be accepted. So anybody give me an example of a limit... uh, a limitation that should be accepted? What about understanding yourself, right? You have strengths and weaknesses. And if you spend all your time trying to overcome your weaknesses, for some of us, it's just not going to happen. We're not well-rounded people. We're not. Uh, People, high-performing people are typically not well-rounded people. Who has a weakness? Like, I'm no good at numbers. I'm not. I'm impatient, right? You know, I'm no good at sales. I'm like a process guy, right? I'm just not the the big sales trainer, okay? And you're never going to be, right? That's a limitation that, yes, you could overcome it possibly, but you would spend your, you know, all your time trying to overcome that limitation, and you still won't be very good at it. You could have accepted it and hired someone who had this, the strength where you have a weakness, right? We talked about responding to market feedback. Hey, I, have, I want a $10 million company and I have 200,000 people in my market. Limitation? In most businesses, yeah. A limitation you need to accept. And you need to do something different, right? And you can get around it, but, you know, n- not with one, that single service in that one area, right? So that's a limitation that should be accepted, right? And we can fight it, fight it, fight it. We can mark it like we're gonna do 10 million and we'll never do 10 million, right? We'll never get there in that situation. So understanding, if you make a mistake either way, either of these mistakes or both in different areas, right? So we to set things right, we have to If we're not seeing it right, we're fighting the wrong battle. We're taking the wrong action. And we think, well, I'm taking this action because, but the because is wrong. The action might be right, but the because is wrong. Right? We're, We're trying to fight the wrong battle. So we need to see that in ourselves. Okay, observe how are we viewing this? Why are we viewing it this way? Am I seeing it clearly? All right, we get what we think we deserve. We get what we think we deserve. You'll never outperform your own opinion of yourself. So we need to think more of ourselves. We need to think that, hey, we can do this. Absolutely, we can do this. This is home improvement, everybody. Okay. It's very doable, right? You'll never outperform your own opinion of yourself. You got to believe I can do this. If anybody can build a great marketing team or build a great sales team, 
and get guys to do the work well and build a great culture and everybody's excited. I mean, come on. This isn't hard. We can do this. And you've got to believe that you can do that. And you've got to believe you can do it now. And you've got to constantly work on yourself. Because you know what happens on a good day? You work through this kind of thought exercise. And you say, yeah, 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 no, I got that. You know what? Like something clicks in your head. I got that. You're in class here. I got that. That's right. And you walk out of here and you're all jacked up. And then the world comes along and punches you in the face again. That's the time. You got to be a practitioner. You have to be a practitioner. And you have to read that journal every day. In the morning and at night. Read that journal. Let those ideas marinate in your brain. Let them become the new you. Because you need help. We established that earlier. We all need help. Left to ourselves, we learn nothing. We do not change. So we need to intervene and practice. Does that make sense? Are you guys with me? Either I'm doing really good or really bad. I'm not sure. Okay? <laughs> Achievement takes courage, right? He who is not courageous enough to take risks will accomplish nothing in life. We need to be courageous, right? We need to be brave. We need to be scared and do it anyway. And you're like, scared? Wait, some improvement. What's scary? Okay? I'm not afraid of heights. I can get on a roof. What's scary? What's scary is committing to that marketing budget. Or what's scary is asking your neighbor three doors down who's a superstar to work for you. What's scary is having a rally speech and facing these guys like you never have before, right? What's scary is stepping out of your comfort zone and doing something you've never done before when you don't really know how it's going to go. There's uncertainty. So, some of the toughest people we know, you, the, the guys think, this guy's tough. He's mentally not tough, right? He's in his groove, he's in his comfort zone, he does the same thing every day, he goes out and he he does what he does well, but he won't step out of that. He's afraid. He doesn't think more of himself. He's afraid he'll look foolish. He's afraid he'll be embarrassed, right? He'd rather play small as an expert than play a higher game as an amateur and make a mistake. That's scary. So you need to be brave. You need to do things every day you've never done before. Say things you've never said before. Show up in a different way that you haven't before. Just dressing different sometimes is scary, right? Because it doesn't match who, your self-image. Your self-image says, hey, no, you were comfortable the way you were. We were good. Why are you rocking the boat? Right? That voice. And most people are comfortable in their mess. I'd rather be comfortable in my mess, at least I know what I'm going to get every day, than to push forward for a better business, a better life, a better result, bigger impact, to let my talents blossom. Right? I'd rather just play small. I know it's how it's going to be every day. Okay, it sucks, but at least I know how it's going to be. Okay, I got a, a rhythm of running a sucky business. Right? It takes courage. What do you think about you? People have a good idea of where their mindset will allow them to go. Some people break out, but most stay in their mental construct of who they are, their comfort zone. So you have a mental construct. You have a self-image, self a self-concept. 
What do you think? There's nobody's opinion in the world that's more important than yours. Your opinion of you. True or not true? The fact is, nobody cares about you. They're all thinking about themselves, right? Oh, they might say, blah, 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 Mark, and then they go away and they forget it, right? You are the, the voice that's most important because you are with you all the time, all the time. What do you think? That's what we're talking about. What do you think about you? Write that down. What do I think about me? Write it down in the clear, like circle it. So when you read your journal later, you could ponder that question. Like stop, being a practitioner, you stop on that thought. You stop, right? You don't just read your journal. You know, um, I mean, if you're like me, my tendency is to blast through as much as possible, right? Check it off the list, you know, task oriented, boom, 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 one task to the next. No, you gotta, you gotta slow down with this stuff. And you gotta look at a question like that and just, what do I think about me? How am I doing? What did I really want when I started this? How am I doing now? And what do I think I'm capable of doing? Am I really believing in myself? Do I believe that I can do this? You'll never outperform your own idea about yourself. So that's a, that's a really important question. Older, but the same. You don't want to be older, but the same. Okay, 10 years from now, most people will be 10 year older versions of who they are now. You don't want that. You want to be a better version, right? Not just older, but better. And let's talk about risk a little bit, okay? So William James uh, says, it's only by risking our persons from one hour to another that we live at all. I mean, everything's a risk, isn't it? Getting up is a risk, okay? Driving our car is a risk. Uh, everything's a risk. Um, and, you know, sometimes we don't want to make a big mistake. And it's true, okay, you only need to go out of business once. <laughs> and it's over, right? Okay, I guess you could start again. But we don't want to take unnecessary risk. We don't want to take foolish risk. I'm talking about personal risk here. I'm talking about putting yourself out there. I'm talking about getting out of your comfort zone. I'm talking about you being a better person, being the kind of person you need to be to get the results that you say that you want, right? So that kind of risk. Doing the sensible thing is only a good idea when the decision is small. For life-changing things, you must risk it. Ah. Isn't that true? It's those moments when we decide, you know what, I'm just going to do this. I've been putting it off for so long because I was afraid, I was scared. And I'm just going to, I'm, I'm just going to do it. I'm going to throw it out there. And those are those big moments, those big crossroads in life that changes everything. Right? So we got we to gotta put it out there. Okay, um, you know, for uh, someone from you that is from your background, from your family or your neighborhood or your upbringing or your schooling to build a $5 million, $10 million, $15, $20, $30, $50 million business is unreasonable, isn't it? It's not expected. And it didn't happen by accident. It will not happen by accident. It's unreasonable. Someone put themselves out there. Right? You cannot escape. Michael Gerber, I love this guy. People are afraid of what will happen. What will happen? You're going to die. That's what's going to happen. We don't know when or how, but it's coming. Don't be afraid. This is your chance. Take it. 
You don't wait for opportunities to come to you. You seize them. Right? The greatest risk, we're saying the greatest risk is that you die with your music in you. The greatest risk is that you did not express the talents that God gave you because you believed in the story that I'm not good enough, that I should play small, that I'll get hurt. And you wind up at the end of your life safe. You got to throw it out there. The risk is that we had our chance. Like, this is your chance. Do you realize how lucky you are to be here in the United States of America or Canada? Okay. At this moment in history, when we have freedom and health, and it's so easy. Are you kidding me? This is easy. Ask your great, 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 great grandfather. Take your shot, right? Take your chance. Don't play small. You got this. We got your back. We know how to do it. How to do it is known. You just need to learn it and take action. Be the leader in your organization. Right? You are lucky. What are you going to do with it? What are you going to do with it? This is your shot. Fanaticism. Redoubling your efforts long after your aim is lost. Okay, we don't want to be fanatics. We got to make this business work for us. All right, so we don't want to lose sight of the fundamental goal. Do you remember the very first School of Entrepreneurship class that we ever had? We first we benchmarked where you are now. Okay, and that's a fun exercise to go back and read what you wrote. If you're a graduate now, you go back and say, Oh my God, I was a wreck. Right. Um, but we set personal goals, didn't we? Right. The business is a vehicle for us to accomplish our personal goals. And so we don't want to get so wrapped up in the business that we lose our sight of what we wanted to accomplish in the first place. So in other words, we have to do it in a way that we can be. What's the word? that we can be, what's the word? Happy, happy, okay? Because if I asked you, well, you know, uh, what's your number one priority this month? Well, it's, uh, I gotta get a sales manager. Okay, well, why? Well, because I, I, want, because I, I uh, need to boost my sales. Well, why? Because I, I have a goal this year and I want to make it. Okay, why? Well, because, you know, I, we want to do better and we want to grow our company, so I have this sales goal. Well, why do you want to do that? Well, because, you know, I want to, um, you know, I want to make some more money. Oh, why do you want to do that? Oh, well, because um, uh, I want to uh, be a bit more financially secure and I want to help the, my extended family. Okay, well, why do you want to do that? Well, because, you know, uh, it seems like my duty, like the right thing to do. Okay, well, why do you want to do that? Well, because, you know, I want the world to be a better place because I was here. Okay, well, why do you want to do that? Well, because I want to have meaning in my life. Okay, well, why do you want to do that? Well, because I... if you ask the question enough times, the root is because I want to be happy. How many people feel we lost sight of that in some days, right? We got so wrapped up in it. And I'm not saying you shouldn't be passionate about your business, it's not what I'm saying. But you need to come from that place that I'm gonna 
enjoy this ride, right? Your business is your project, not your job. It's fascinating. It's a fascinating project. And I'm going to work on my project. And when it doesn't work out, I'm going to say, isn't that something? I didn't do that well. I got to figure that out. Who can I got to call? I'm going to call Bill, see what he does. All right. I'm going to figure this out. I'm gonna, don't they have an exercise on that? Let me, let me I got to get this right. See, it's just feedback. You don't want to attach your happiness to your business's performance. It's so easy when things are going well. Things are going well, I'm happy. That's great, but what if things aren't going well, which most days they aren't, right? By your definition, most days, it's not where we want it to be. Yes or no? I mean, is that true? Most days, it sucks in some fashion, some, some dimension of sucks, right? So are we going to suspend our happiness till it's perfect? When is it going to be perfect? Never. That's right. So we need to remember to be happy. Remember to enjoy the ride. Remember to enjoy the people, okay? If you didn't make your goals or, you know, you blew it in defense and you made 0% profit and you're bummed out, what about Jose there? Who busted his ass, he comes to work every day and he works in the cold. Should I be miserable and rub that off on him? He did his part, right? And I gotta celebrate. I, there's people around me that, you know, are trying to help me succeed, right? I mean, that's something to celebrate right there. If I failed, so long as I know the reason why, I'm one cl step closer to success, right? We said an entrepreneur spends the beginning part of their career being desperately underpaid so that if they make it in sort of a wild gamble, um, <laughs> that they can spend the last part of their career being wildly overpaid. So you might be here, your financial results are not showing just yet, but you are making progress as long as you're learning, as long as you as the leader are progressing. Understand that and be happy for that, okay? Be happy for that. It's all ride, it's all journey. The money's nice when you can make it, but we have to learn to be happy. That's the most important thing. That's the fundamental goal. Am I right or not right? Right? We all just wanna be happy, right? Like when our kids, you know, uh, uh, grow up, do we say, boy, I hope that kid makes a lot of money. No, we say, I hope that kid is happy, right? Finds happiness, does something that makes them happy, right? Finds somebody that makes them happy. That's what we want. That's what we wish for our, our, our dearest children, right? And you know what? Our parents wanted that for us. Don't forget to be happy. So I want you to share this question. I want you to write an answer and I want you to share at your tables. I want this business so that I want this business so that, and don't take the shortcut and say, I can be happy. All right. <laughs> we know that. Okay. We know that that's the last sentence of your explanation. Okay. We got that, but put something in the middle, right? Put something in the middle of that, right? I want this business so that, ba, 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 okay, so I can be happy, all right? So write it down. Why do you want this business? Why did you start this? Because for all the aggravation you have to go through, statistically, you're a crazy person. You signed up for a lot of abuse, a lot of work, right? A lot of frustration, a lot of things you had to learn. The average person goes to work nine to five, doesn't have to know too much. Leave, no problem. Show up the next day, do it again, it's easy. You could have chose that route, right? But you didn't, you chose the life of an entrepreneur. You signed up for this. 
You want this business so that. Okay, so our personal goals boil down to this. Uh, I want to make X dollars a year working X hours a week and be happy doing it. Now, the be happy doing it has different dimensions that we unpacked in the personal goals exercise, but you want to do it in a way that works for you. So some of us can be, you know, the, the leader, some of us want, you know, sales, you want to be sales manager, you want to be production manager, you want to, you know, uh, stay in the office, you want to be more, you know, recruiting and training. I mean, you know, you can do this in a way that makes you happy, right? Look, what I did was I built the most incredible contractor, uh, home improvement contractor facility in the world. You know why? Because it makes me happy. Because I want to come here every day and see this incredible place and be able to look around and see all the people working and, and give, and they like it too. I'm mean, gonna figure if I like it, they're gonna like it, right? Uh, and, you know, so you can do it in a way that makes you happy. Now, you all can't build the most incredible home improvement contractor building in the world just yet. Not all of you just yet, okay? But you can do things in a way, in a way that makes you happy, right? It's a matter of style, right? A matter of grace, right? Uh, that you can conduct yourself inside your business in a way that fills you up, right? If you're not happy, you're doing it wrong. Write that down. If you're not happy, you're doing it wrong. It's not the, the business, not the industry. I mean, it, you know, that's all different discussions, you understand. But, and I would say if, if you're frustrated, you're doing it wrong. So this was our simple goal here and be happy doing it. If you're, I know all of you have gotten in the trap of <clears throat> I'm working way too many hours a week. Yes? Okay, yes. I'm working way too many hours. I got sucked in, right? The business grew and I didn't delegate fast enough, right? I didn't build my team fast enough. I chased away good people. Now I'm left with the job, right? The management jobs, right? Or all the jobs, right? So if it's not working, you're doing it wrong. Okay. Um, so I made this chart the other day. Uh, this is how it is, isn't it? In the beginning, this is time. This is supposed to say time, actually. In, in the beginning, <clears throat> it's your dream, your vision. You own it all yourself, right? No one else can see it, right? You got a, a tool bag and a circular saw and a dream, right? You know what I mean, right? And <clears throat> you own it. It's all yours. And then somebody comes along and says, you know, yeah, I'd like to help you. You know, and they, they believe in it, right? But mostly it's still yours. And then as you get a little momentum, other people come along, right? And they say, oh, look what Jerry's doing here. Jerry and Jordan have a mission. They have a passion. They got, they got a building, a little building. This is cool, you know? And more and more people start believing in the vision, right? But that's what you gotta do. You gotta will it into existence. For me, I don't have to do much, right? My people, they're jacked up. They've been here a long time. They wanna hire somebody. They walk in the building. They meet Lisa, the recruiter. They look around here. They say, holy cow, they got their stuff together, right? They buy into the dream. I never meet them, right? But in the beginning, it's all yours. You gotta will this thing into existence. You gotta be good at vision casting. You gotta show people things that aren't there yet. And you better believe it.
you better believe it because they can tell. Hey, will you come? I'm going to try this. I don't know. Right? Or look, this is what's going to happen. And I know I have the roadmap. Look at here. And I know this other guy, he's from uh, Appleton, Wisconsin, and he did it. Look at And this other guy from Buffalo, and we're going to do the same thing here. Right? And look at pictures of their facility. This is going to be great. We're going we're gonna to have this facility. We're going to have multiple crews. I need leaders to help me. I think you could help me. Right? And I want you to join my team. We're going places. You could be a big part of a, a growing thing here. This is, we're going to have fun. This is an adventure. This is exciting. And it's going to happen. Right? Look, I got my visual ambition here. And we're going to get leads this way. And this is how this is going to happen. You're going to be the salesperson. And then, right? And you, you better believe it. So they buy in. It's confidence and enthusiasm, right? Believe in things that aren't there. Believe in the unseen. Believe in things that haven't happened yet, right? And slowly, right, they come around and you're here, right? You might be flatlined on the net profit for a good while as you reinvest, okay? But you're making progress, right? You're making progress. It doesn't show in the financials, but you know why. You know why. You got, you're investing in inventory, you're investing in education and people and marketing ahead of time that's not fully kicking in yet. You don't have referrals yet. You're investing in trucks, you're investing in facility, you're investing in phone system. You're investing in all these things, right? That's why you have no money. But you're building a business, right? You're building a business and you know that this is going to come, right? And when you get here, your job changes to don't mess it up. String these years together and don't screw it up, right? Don't chase all these people away by doing something stupid.